Good morning, everybody. Now, news from the United States is that an act of God has destroyed a large part of a Pfizer storage facility and 50,000 pallets of their product, whatever that is, has been destroyed. Now, whether this was God himself or a natural weather phenomenon, I don't know. I'm a Christian, but I can't say, you know, for sure what God is doing in terms of the weather. But certainly, in insurance terms, act of God is a term. It is a a legal and a financial term that says if something happens, which is an unforeseen natural phenomenon, such as an earthquake or a volcano or a tornado, as it was in this case, that is deemed to be an act of God. And in terms of insurance payments, insurance companies won't pay up for something like that because it's unforeseen and they cannot sort of have any kind of risk assessment as to the the likelihood of it happening and uh, the financial risks associated with it. So they just simply don't cover things that are deemed to be acts of God. So this is what happened in North Carolina. So we're told, and the likeliest scenario is that a tornado appeared, ripped through uh, part of a facility. Uh, You can see in pictures and and drone footage um, that the uh, facility or a large part of it is, is completely ruined and all of these products inside it as well. Now, whether it contained these um, experimental injections that they've been trying to get into the bodies of nearly 8 billion people in the world over the last three years or not, I don't know. There are some suggestions that uh, a lot of these things were in the facility and the part of the facility that was destroyed. Other people are saying, no, it well, it contained other things like uh, analgesics and so on. And some people are saying, well, it contained some of them, but also some of the coerced experimental injections of genetic technologies that they've been injecting into people, whatever. Um, I think probably there were some of these things here uh, on balance, looking at the various reports that are coming out about the incident, um, which can only be good news because there are increasing um, reports and studies that are showing that these things are causing uh, all kinds of health issues, such as uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myocarditis, um, strokes, etc., and uh, SADS, sudden adult death syndrome, with more sports people than the number of sports people that have uh, succumbed to SADS over the last couple of years is apparently 37 times higher than in all of the previous times since uh, people have been keeping records. And the number of people who have had injuries uh, on the VAERS um, database and the similar databases, the yellow card database in the the UK and the European one, which logs these things, is showing that there's been more injuries in each year, one year, um, 2021, 2022, um, in each of those years, there's been more injuries from these things uh, in total than in the last 15 years uh, put together up to uh, 2020 and including 2020 before these things were rolled out at the start of 2021. Um, now fewer people are, are having them. It seems that you know they've got these things into as many people as they possibly can get them into. But as someone noted at the beginning of this whole period, um, pharmaceutical companies were in a financial mess because they haven't had any real new killer breakthrough in terms of pharmaceuticals for the last 20 years. And the last thing um, that they uh, invented was statins. 
and uh, they got statins were taken up. Yeah, how many billions of people take statins, which became a massive money spinner for the pharmaceutical uh, companies. And that's kept them going for a certain period of time until the patent runs out on them. And then generic companies come in. And uh, when things are off patent after 20 years, something like that, then these generic companies can make them without any financial penalty. And they make them uh, more cheaply than the pharmaceutical companies can do themselves. They find different ways of doing it and scaling it up and mass producing these things, particularly in India. India is very good at doing this. And then they export them and sell them around the world. So once something comes off pattern that has been a money spinner for the big pharmaceutical companies, they don't make any money from it anymore. Um, before statins, uh, the big money spinner through the 80s and 90s for them were the uh, antidepressants and antipsychotics, the SSRIs and things like that. Massive money spinner and still are. Um, to some extent, you know, generic companies can make them, but the big pharma still makes a little bit out of them. But as time goes on, they make less and less because more generic companies make them. So they need a new money spinner. And as people noted, what their business plan was for the next 10 or 20 years is to get these um, what are called um, something beginning with V but are actually genetic technologies that they are branding as that thing. Um, but, um, you know, we've seen the, the health effects of them, but this was going to be their big money spinner. So to get governments to buy these new um, gene technologies, these experimental gene technologies, brand them as something else, and then all the governments around the world would be buying them uh, you know, twice a year, two doses a year per person everywhere in the world. That would be, what, 16 billion doses a year of this stuff. Um, they'll make masses of profits on these injections and with other things as well, not just for coronavirus, but also for flu, um, with, with it, which actually got a new processing technology uh, since 2019 the flu vaccines have been made in dog cells rather than egg cells uh, as they were before uh, which co contains all kinds of risks because you're getting genetic material from dogs in these things which they're injecting into you if you're silly enough to have um, one of these things for flu I've never had one of them and I never will um, so you know, what, what should really happen to these pharmaceutical companies is that they couldn't sell these things on the free market with normal advertising. So they've got governments to buy these things and then ramp up fear mongering and also then impose lockdowns and all this kind of stuff in order to get people afraid. And then the narrative was... If we all take an injection, then we can come out of lockdown. And shame on anybody who pushed that narrative because it's totally deplorable. And uh, we see what it's done. It took a lot of courage to stand up against that narrative in 2020, 2021, when everyone was on your back calling you um, all kinds of names, conspiracy theorists, etc., etc., um, just for standing up against this obvious blatant uh, propaganda. But there we go. I did it and, and many other people did. So, you know, if you stood up and you put your head above the parapet in 2020, 2021, to stand up against these things, you know, um, God bless you. Now, there's a lot of people coming out now when it's safe and saying, oh, you know, this is terrible what happened. But where were they? in 2021. They were nowhere to be seen. So, you know, the people really who would stand up for freedom and stand up to see, you know, can understand what was going on was speaking out then. Because, you know, on one on one level, this is about money. This is about making money for the pharmaceutical companies. Big Pharma, whose cash cows from the 80s, 90s, noughties, 10s has run out and they need a new cash cow for the next 20 years. But this is a cash cow that is not 
um, safe and effective. And uh, it's not something that is uh, helping anybody. Um, so, you know, these things, perhaps we should just say about the big farmer, look, you, you've done your business, you've come to the end of your natural business life, now just go away and wind up and, uh, you know, go and do something useful. Um, actually, like looking into natural health and see how that can uh, complement our health and preventative medicine rather than um, waiting till we're all chronically ill and then dosing us full of um, things that we don't need or wouldn't need if we were chronically, weren't chronically ill. Um, but there you go. There's a whole other video <laughs> or a series of videos we could make about that topic. But back to the original point here, um, it's very, very interesting um, that this Pfizer storage facility has been hit by a tornado. And if this saves the lives of millions of people who will not be injected with uh, something that they should not be injected with, then that can only be a very, very good thing. Thank you, God. <laughs> God bless you all.